for the most part, the Pokemon trading card game is about Pokemon and attacking one another and trying to knock the other team's Pokemon out. But there are other play styles in Pokemon, including like Mill decks, which is try and force your opponent to run out of cards, and Stall decks, where you are just trying to put your opponent in a situation where they cannot play the game and they run out of cards until it's over. And today we are going to be taking on the biggest threat in the Pokemon TCG in terms of stall tactics, and that is the Snorlax Stall deck. I'm Jeff from InThirdPerson.com. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and we got to talk about the Snorlax stall. Now, this isn't the first time Snorlax, Snorlax has been a stall deck. Um, I think it's the Team Plasma Snorlax. I'm not the most well-versed in history, but I know Block Snorlax has existed in the past, and it is back with the Pokemon Go Snorlax, where its block ability states, as long as this Pokemon is in the active spot, your opponent's active Pokemon can't retreat and the general idea is that you want to trap pokemon that can't really attack into the active and force your opponent to either play a bunch of switch cards or have ways of getting their proper attackers into the active so they could knock out snorlax snorlax has i mean 150 hp for a basic is pretty good but it also can be knocked out pretty easily and its attack is terrible and we don't run energy in this deck energy well we do we run one energy card but otherwise the whole point of the game is just to prevent your opponent from being able to attack it's not necessarily a play style for everybody but it is a way to play and it does show another level of skill expression and a lot of decks in the meta just aren't really built to deal with with Snorlax. So let's go and run through this deck list. We've got four copies of this stall Snorlax. We've got one copy of Mimikyu, which prevents attacks from Pokemon or avoids attacks from Pokemon EX and Pokemon V. Now, this there are some workarounds to this, like Mew EX can hit Mimikyu by copying its move, uh, which is kind of annoying, but uh, this can serve as a wall. And in certain cases, in certain decks, uh, they're not going to have an answer for this. So this card in and of itself can be an auto win. We do have a Pidgeot V and we're using this for its Vanishing Wings ability where once during your turn, this po if this Pokemon's on your bench, you may shuffle it and attach all cards into your deck. So the idea is you put the Pidgeot on the board and then you use its ability to put it back into your deck and this prevents you from decking out and losing the game by running out of cards yourself. We do have a Rotom V for its instant charge ability once during your turn you may draw three cards uh if you use this ability end your turn uh you're not really going to want to play this much you will play this if you want to draw some cards but it does give your op your opponents an opportunity to gust the snorlax out of the active put in the rotom and potentially take two prizes in one go so that's something to keep in mind there are ways to get around this or get out of this but it is a risk that you have to account for when playing the Rotom on the board. And then we also have Crabominable V, which is a, a one of the more recent innovations in the Snorlax stall deck. For We do have one energy in the deck specifically for Trigger Avalanche, where you can discard the top two cards of your opponent's deck. This is not something you're going to be playing for most of the match. This is a card you're going to play at the very end when your opponent has two cards and you can bring in the Kerbominable and the energy and just mill those last two cards out of the game so that you can win. If they're trying to outstall you, then yeah, Kerbominable here is, is here for that. We have a whopping 51 trainer cards in this deck. So there are going to be times where this deck feels pretty bricky because of how many trainers are in here we do have a heavy ball to get a basic we have four counter catchers as soon as we fall behind on prizes we can use counter catcher to gust up a pokemon from the bench into the active this is going to be our probably one of our big ways of trapping pokemon that they don't want in the active we do have one copy of switch cart which does heal for basic Pokemon when they are moved from the active to the bench. We have two copies of Misfortune Sisters. Let's us look at the top five cards of our opponent's deck and discard any items we find there. So yeah, this is an awesome card for control style decks. Get rid of those switch cards, escape ropes, and so on. Four copies of Poke Gear. Let's us look at the top seven cards of our deck and grab a supporter of which there are many in this deck. We have one copy of Team Yell's Cheer. Let's us shuffle in any combination of Pokemon and Supporter cards, except for Team Yell's Cheer from your discard pile into the deck. So 
know, kind of help us prevent deck out while also grabbing key support cards for us. Um, we do have three copies of Pokestop. We are using this to discard the top three cards of our deck, keep any items that we find there. This can help us from time to time. It does technically mill ourselves out a bit, but we do run a bunch of items in our deck, so this can help us out more than it hurts. Well, I guess it's a gamble, but regardless, <laughs> it can help. Two copies of Erica's Invitation. This is a card from Scarlet and Violet 151. You get to your your opponent reveals their hand and you put a basic Pokemon you find there onto your opponent's bench and then you move it into the active. So this could be a double-edged sword. They there's a chance that they don't have a basic Pokemon in their hand and then it's a waste. There's a chance that you actually play it and then you end up trapping a Pokemon in the active that you really don't want to trap. Uh, one of the matches here is against a Chen Pao deck, and if we played Erica's Invitation and pulled in a Chen Pao, we would have been screwed. So <laughs> keep this in mind when you are playing Erica's Invitation. It is a gamble. We do have two copies of Forest Seal Stone. We can use it as our V-Star power, grab a card from the deck. We do have to attach this to a Pokemon V, which is why the Crabominable and the Pidgeot make a lot of sense. Ideally, putting it on the Pidgeot so that you can uh, then remove the Pidgeot as soon as you bench it. Uh, we do have one copy of Echoing Horn where you can put a Pokemon from the discard pile onto their bench. This is particularly great if your opponent starts to play stuff that you don't want benched. Um, you can play the Echoing Horn and then you can play the Echoing Horn and then trap whatever they whatever you put with the with the echoing horn right so uh yeah one of the tactics oftentimes is to yeah get rid of pokemon that they don't want trapped in the discard pile and this gets them back into the game we do have one copy of silene and let's we flip two coins and for each heads we get to grab a pokemon of our or like an a card from our choice from the discard pile put it onto the top of our deck so some really good recovery there for pretty much general recovery anything we want four copies of penny we can put one of our basic pokemon and all attached cards into our hand not only is this a great way of healing off damaged snorlaxes but more importantly getting rid of pokemon v that we don't want on the board anymore like a rotom like a um i guess pidgeot if path to the peak is down like Kerbomnable. Th those types of pokemon we can get rid of with penny we do have three copies of Palpad to get two supporters from our discard back into our deck. Four copies of Nest Ball to get those Snorlaxes down. One copy of Battle VIP Pass. If we hit it on the first turn, we can set up a little bit wider. We have three copies of Bravery Charm. Bump our Snorlax's HP up to 200, which makes it a bit more difficult to one-shot. Four copies of Boss's Orders for Gusting. One copy of Peonia. Just in case we, we get a bunch of cards that we want stuck in the prizes, we can use Peonia to try and fish those out. Four copies of Arvin, great card in this deck, lets us grab an item and a tool card and put it into our hand. One copy of Super Rod for some energy, I guess mostly Pokemon recovery in this deck. And then four copies of Cross Switcher to try and gust our desired trap target into the active, while also switching ourselves. And one Water Energy specifically for the Crabominable. So your general game plan, you want to get Snorlax in the active and just keep trying to trap your opponent's support Pokemon or anything that's not good as an attacker, trap it in the active. All right, let's go and get to these matches. Okay, we get a Snorlax down. Man, I... <laughs> I kind of don't like the starts with the Snorlax decks, but they... Okay, Chen Pao. Chen Pao. Um, is this... They don't run that many Switch cards. They run some switch cards let's go and put down a snorlax and is erica's invitation a trap i kind of like the badoof here as is um let's go and put a bravery charm on the snorlax and we can wait And let's see how they they approach it here. What's annoying is that the the back Scalibur can accelerate anywhere. Technically, they could fight with the Bibarel. It, it's a it's off a coin flip, but they can. They could even fight with the Frigabax here if they wanted to. Okay, 
We get a third Snorlax. That's nice. Uh, do we play the Erica? Erica's kind of a, a risk, actually. I think we wait. I think we wait until there's like an actual threat happening here. Yeah, the one card we want to trap is the Bidoof. If it turns into Bibaral, technically, it becomes an attacker attack risk. Frigabax is an attack risk because they can accelerate. I mean, it would be slow, but they can. Okay, they're going to go and throw some stuff back in with Rod. Uh, we will have to be mindful of... Yeah, the Chen Pao, we don't want to trap in the active. They're just going to get a whole bunch of energy, and as soon as they get the Backscalibur, then we're dead. And we also don't want to trap the Frigate Backs, because they can turn that into Backscalibur, accelerate a bunch of energy to themselves, and then we are in trouble. And yeah, this card could actually be a trap. If we accelerate, if we just trap a Chen Pao in the active, that would be very bad. Okay, they're going to play an Iono. Mix things up here. I know they're going to have, almost certainly, if they have cross switchers, that could be a problem. Uh, if they have Mew, that can be a problem. They can accelerate a bunch of energy to Mew and use genome ha hacking. So the only card we really want to to trap here is the the Bidoof. So that's something worth noting. Do we need to Silene for anything? No. Um I will grab a let's grab an Arvin. Uh yeah we'll grab an Arvin. What can we even Arvin for at this point? I don't think we want to bench anything else. I could play for a fourth Snorlax. Um, I don't think we need to. Three Snorlaxes feels more than enough. And Arvin is, once they take a prize, we can start playing Countercatcher on stuff. But really, the only target we want to countercatcher is the Beebrel. And even the Beebrel is not a perfect target because they can still attack with Beebrel. <laughs> it's not a good attack, but they can. Okay, here comes the Baskalibur candy. Yeah, everything here can attack. And it's not common to see Mew in a ba uh, Chen Pao list. But, yeah, the genome hacking and the free retreat, it's not necessarily a bad <laughs> a bad tech to have. Okay, they bench lock themselves. So really the only thing we want to trap is this Bidoof. Okay. Mm, I don't think we need to play anything else. So let's let's continue. If they could get them, if they had gotten themselves to a point where it was all of this except for the Bidoof, then they could pretty easily win this game. They could accelerate energy to any of these Pokemon. I guess the Radiant Greninja would be inefficient. Ooh, canceling Cologne. Oh, I forgot they run that. Okay. So they're probably going to bring in, yeah, Chen Pao. Probably get a knock here. If they can't get a knock here. Interesting. Probably get the, the one without the charm. Oh. oh, okay. That's to grab more energy so they can take the KO. Okay. I forgot. They also have the canceling cologne here, but they burned one. At most, they have two. Okay. We could also use Arvin for a cross switcher piece. Let's see. But yeah, I would imagine that this Chen Pa or this Snorlax is done. 240. Take the KO. Yep. That's fine. That's fine. We have multiple outs to 
Yeah, at this point, I just want a counter catcher at this point. Arvin, counter catcher. Oh, never mind. I don't even have to do that. And we can go and grab a another Snorlax here. All right. If we're not going to do that, maybe we Silene for the other one. Um, I guess we I think we can wait, right? I think we can wait. If we get it down to two Snorlaxes, then maybe we we sound the alarm. But for the time being, I think we're fine. Why are you watching this video? Like real talk. This is <laughs> I think I think the Snorlax stall play. And I I like part of me is like, yeah, I'm glad that there are different ways to play the Pokemon trading card game. And I I think that is great, but like personally i just don't like playing this style of game and i can't imagine you as a viewer are enjoying this style of of watching watching this deck you know work and look there's there's definitely it's not control decks aren't necessarily like a win auto win there are a lot of um there are ways to blow it up Ooh, that's a really bad <laughs> poke stop no items there um, in this video, you will see, I like, I'm putting the matches out of order here. You will see me lose and there are ways around it, but certain decks are better built for this matchup than others. Okay. Yep. Yeah, Chen Pao cross switcher. Sure. Uh, at which point they will have burned all four cross switchers if they if they go about that. Oh yeah, Miss Fortune Sisters is pretty nice. Let's go and burn that, and we will go. Oh yes, let's get rid of that Earthen Vessel. The Battle VIP Pass actually doesn't hurt me getting rid of them, but it it mills their deck a little further. Let's go Poke Stop here. Okay, yeah, Counter Catcher is good. Boss is bad. Losing Boss is bad. Um. Oh, we can go and Palpad for Boss and Misfortune Sisters. Misfortune Sisters is a good one here because they are an item-heavy deck. And maybe we wait for the following turn to see if we can get another Misfortune Sisters play. So they have at least one more Gust, right? Odds are this build ha doesn't have any boss. It's just going to be maybe. Yeah, I'm guessing it's four cross switcher and that's it. They are milling through their deck very fast. <laughs> okay. Energy retrieval. Sure. Grab all that back. And they do get rid of the battle VIP passes. Odds are they only have one Iono in this deck. This looks very similar to the deck that I covered on the channel earlier. Okay. And yeah, boss. We like boss. We like, let's go and see if we can hit a Misfortune Sisters here. Yes. Yes, we do. All right. Let's keep milling these cards. Oh, yes. Let's get rid of that Nest Ball and that Ultra Ball. Shuffle up their deck. Bring it down to 13. And the only trainer. Yeah, I think we can wait. Ah, uh, let's go and hit this. See what we get. For funsies at this point. Ooh, Echoing Horn. Echoing Horn's... Per oh, losing both Forest Seal Stones. Uh, that could come back to haunt us later. Uh, Pokestop used to get Forest Seal Stone, but Forest Seal Stone no longer counts as an item. Echoing Horn could be... Uh, at this point, the Bidoof's not going to get bumped. Like, they don't play Collapse Stadium in this. They're not going to be able to get rid of Bidoof. They are whittling their deck down to the... Oh, they're going to get a Beebrill. Uh, it, it took them long enough to come through with this strategy. Like, attack with the Tail Smash, absolutely. Yeah, they finally got the idea to attack with the Tail Smash here. So, let's see if they hit it. Tails? Yes! <laughs> Okay, how many tools do we have? Okay, well, we lost one of our charms, so that's annoying. Um, actually, can we Silene for that back? Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that here. Ooh, double heads on the Silene. That's pretty sick, actually. Uh, let's go and throw in the Snorlax and the, the charm here. 
Okay. Um, ooh, I can't poke stop here. I should have put the put it the other way around. That's fine. That's fine. I guess regardless with the charm, it's the B roll is still a two hit KO. Yeah, they should have done gone with the B roll as an attacker like three moves ago, if not sooner. I would also expect, yeah, they're gonna cross switcher here. And attack, which is fine. We have the counter catcher ready to go. We have Arvin ready to go. Technically, there's nothing safe to to trap here. I guess the best bet is the B roll, but. Okay, they're going to get rid of all the energy off the Chen Pao, keep the Bieber roll uh, alive, which is fine. Yeah. They go and knock us out here. They've only got five cards left. They've burned their Iono. I don't think they run multiple Iono in this deck. So I will go and bench another Snorlax. Uh, we do know there's a charm on the other end of this. And I will gladly play Counter Catcher to go and grab a Beeberl. And I know we can Poke Stop for at least a Charm. Okay, yeah. What? Oh, the Charm is the tool. Yeah, that doesn't work anymore. Uh, I just said, okay, that was a silly play on, on my part then. And let's go and... Do we get the Misfortune Sisters back? At this point, we're in pretty good shape. Yeah, let's go and... <laughs> Grab a Silene and a Miss Fortune Sisters and throw those back in the deck. And what can we Arvin for? Yeah, Poke Gear and a yeah, just Poke Gear. Sure, that was probably a waste of an Arvin here. Let's go and wait. What do they even have left in the deck? So, like based on my understanding, they probably have one Irida. They've burned all their Cross Switchers. I doubt they have a Boss's Orders. They, they, I doubt they have more than one. They are going to swing for 100 here. That's annoying. That's annoying. But thankfully, <laughs> thankfully, we have Penny here to negate that damage. And that might be a, a back-breaking play for our opponent here. Let's go and grab that Snorlax. Let's go put the new one in. And yeah, we'll put that charm back on. And I think we can... Yeah, let's poke a gear, see what we can grab. Yeah, that Misfortune Sisters. Let's go. I don't know if we're actually going to hit, but... Oh, yeah, we can't play it right now. That's fine. That's fine. And trainers... Yeah, we'll hold off. We'll just hold off. We, we can wait at this point. Our hand is pretty good. I don't think our opponent, even if Bibrel <laughs> swings for a lot, like, it's just not... It's not going to be enough. <laughs> okay. Okay. We can Poke Gear and this three Pokemon and supporter cards, Penny, Erica. Uh, yeah, we can grab a Team Yells here. Sure. Why not? And we can grab a... Ah, let's miss Fortune Sisters at this point. Yeah, we'll get rid of that rare candy. So they only have an Irida and a Bibarel. I think they're dead. <laughs> I doubt they have the means of getting out of this at this point. They are going to hit for 100. That's annoying, right? That's annoying. Um, we can at least heal some of that damage off. So let's go and switch cart into the other Snorlax. Bring that down. And we wait. And we should be good at this point. Why are you still... Why are you still watching this video? <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, they're going to swing with the end of it. They're going to whiff on the on this. And that's game. That is game. I'm going to mercifully just end it here so that both of us can move on with our lives. Um, you know, like, hey, this is... There are some people that really enjoy this style of play like uh shout outs to i don't know like sander wojcik for example is the 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 god of control decks in the pokemon tcg and their whole point their whole play style is like i don't want you to play and 
this is one way to go about doing that. Um, and probably the easiest way, honestly, the control decks that that I've come up against in in the past in my time playing this are a lot more a lot more complicated than this one. Really, this is this is trap the the active. And there's it's a pretty gimmicky deck. Like if you if you can play your deck in a way where you only bench attackers and you just keep attacking that way and you try and not get something a support Pokemon trapped, then then I'd be screwed or control would be screwed. This deck, unfortunately, Chen Pao is they had the Bieber. They, they started with the Bidoof and they were stuck with that. And it, it sucks they ran into someone playing this deck because I think Chen Pao otherwise is pretty decently equipped to to deal with this deck unfortunately even the Bibarel doing a hundred damage off a coin flip and like if I had the pennies and stuff which I did I could just heal this over and over again and it was going to be a bad time for them so uh we take the win there ggs all right we're going first here and I'm not actually sure if first or second is the way to go second might be better because we're not looking to attack um but let's see if we can trap something in the active here. And at least we can get a second Snorlax out. And then we could Erica's Invitation. That's a nice card to have in this deck. This is not necessarily a bad start. I would like to get more Snorlaxes on the board. But let's see what we are working with here. Yeah, the way I, I know there are there's discussions online of like, Oh, yeah, the easy way to beat Snort. There's two ways, primarily. Okay, good start. They've got the Bidoof down, and we've got double boss in hand. Let's go and drop a second Snorlax. Um, you know what? Let's Poke Gear for funsies and see what we get. Okay, Arvin's good. Arvin's good. All right, and we pass. I don't think there's any need to play the charm right now. And, yeah, right now the, the priority is trap the the Bidoof. As long as the Bidoof's in there, we're probably fine. Ooh, Palkia. Okay. This is a good deck to be up against right now. Ooh, VIP pass. Uh-oh. I think they're already in trouble, TBH. Like, they could have just gone Palkia if they only played the Palkia attached to energy and could have just, like, slowly swing. They could get it here. I think we're gonna be okay. <laughs> I think we'll be okay in this one. They have already... Oh, they only played one. Oh, oh, okay. The Iono is annoying. But let's see what we are. Okay, four seal stone does suck. Um, but we do have Penny. Okay. I don't think there's any need to rush right now i think we can just kind of hold our hand at the moment it would be nice to yeah i think we'll just wait we'll just wait we could play the rotom to draw more cards um and then penny at the next turn mm. let's i think we just wait i don't think there's any reason to to rush right now at most they take out one snorlax at which point we can go and grab another one. Okay, they're going to shuffle up the hands again. Fair enough. Okay. All right. They are still stuck. <laughs> All right. We do get another penny. Let's go and grab ourselves an Arvin. And yeah, we could use Arvin to further establish our, our board state here. Nest Ball and a... A forest steel stone. Yeah, and we'll just go throw down a third Snorlax if we have to. We could also get a Mimikyu down and just try and block them from being able to attack. But I think right now we are in pretty good shape. Actually, we've put ourselves in an awkward position. We have put ourselves in a position where they can one-shot the, the Snorlaxes here which is actually kind of annoying. I probably should have kept it to just two. Maybe we pull one out and they do get a switch. If they take one prize though, we can just counter catch her. Let's see how they play it. I don't think they have energy though. 
Okay, they're gonna bring a beaver. That's fine. And draw some more cards. Um, we do have charm, so let's see how they. So 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. No, they still can't knock us out. At least not at the moment. Okay. Yeah, maybe we do play the the charm here. And do we get rid of a penny? Or get rid of a... Yeah, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 20, 40, 60. So if we get rid of one Snorlax... We'll just hold on to that. Now, even if they fill their bench, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 20, 40, they still can't knock us out. I mean, even with, yeah, they can't knock out the other Snorlax. So this is about as wide as we want to go, which is a little unorthodox for, for most deck strategies in the current meta, but this, this is what we are cooking with. Ooh, the Lost City is annoying. That is annoying. All right. They came prepared. <laughs> they came prepared. Yeah, now how do we go about this? We might have to get the Mimikyu Iron Valiant. Ooh, trying to play that new... So they probably have... That's actually kind of annoying because they probably then have a billion switch cards. Hmm. But then we could just trap the Iron Valiant. If they take a prize, we have the counter catcher, so we can grab some stuff here. Uh, we could pal pad for... No, I don't think we need to pal pad right now. Um, I think we just wait. Now, unfortunately, we could lose the Snorlax to... Oh, so the Iron Valiant actually gets around the, the Mimikyu because they could just drop damage counters. I believe Mimikyu does not block the... Let's see. Let's read that. Put two damage counters. Yeah, I think that... I think the it doesn't... Mimic you would not block the Iron Valiant stuff. Okay. If they knock out a Snorlax here, I think they're still short. So 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. Okay. Yeah, they still, they're still looking for energy. This is a absolute nightmare for all parties involved. I think we continue to wait. Sorry about the, the computer issue there. Hmm... So how many pennies have we used? Okay, we're probably going to need a bunch of pennies. So I think after we play the second penny, we'll pal pad more. And we'll see how long if they have the... Uh, if they want to stomach this match. <laughs> okay. Let's see what they're throwing out. We already have the trap right here. The beep roll. We get that in there, we're good. But let's see. I can't imagine this video being particularly like it might just be one match. I don't know if you guys have the have the stomach to to watch Snorlax stall. I think this is brutal. <laughs> um, okay, they still don't have an energy, or they're waiting for something. Okay, we can play Erica's invitation and see what we we grab here for funsies. Um, although the Palkia is not too dangerous at the moment, but it is... Let's see. Nothing. Lame. Okay, that was a waste. Uh, let's end. No, nope. okay. Vacuum away the charm. That does kind of suck. Feels like they've even... They've kind of teched out for this match. So 20, 40, 60, 80... 124. Yeah, they will. They'll be just short. Interesting. They put the caps uh, just to draw more cards. I see. I see. They get their two energy. All right. Let's get this party started.
They're going to start swinging. 140. I don't like that. I don't like that. And they've still got 22 cards left. Um, that is annoying. Let's go and heal that off. And we'll put the other Snorlax in. Put another one down. Uh, I could put Kerbominable in to get the Forest Seal Stone, but I don't think I want to. Um, it might be worth it to bump the Lost City, but then they could simply just play another Lost City. And that would be profoundly annoying. Okay, they're going to get another attacker powered up here. And we don't have a good out here. Yeah, we might have to play the crab. Well, if the cra if we play the crab... 24, 60... 24... Oh, 60, 80, 100, 20, 40. Yeah. I forgot. I thought this was uh, Suicune, so I kept saying 20. The base damage is actually 60. That is... That is hella annoying. Okay. So... Um... Let's go... Okay, I think I know what we gotta do. Let's go and get a double penny back. And I think we have to play the crab. I guess we could also wait. Now, how desperate am I to stop this? Uh... Yeah, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Um, let's go and grab a... A boss here yeah we got this cool we could be in trouble after that um, but and let's go yeah I'll wait here now we slow them down yet again hmm <laughs> yeah Snorlax doll is admittedly a deck I don't have that much experience with it is not my my cup of tea in terms of the way that I like to play the Pokemon trading card game. And fighting against this style of control deck is definitely not, not a strong suit of mine. Uh-oh, here comes the Palkia. And they're going to throw this Snorlax in the Lost Zone, which is profoundly annoying. Unfortunately, yeah, this their particular flavor of Palkia is not well suited for our strategy having an iron valiant variant means they have a ton of switch cards and we just lost one of our snorlaxes to the lost zone so uh now we're now we're in trouble now we're in trouble let's go and throw a second snorlax in and we will counter catcher this beeberl up and now we do i want to grab anything back uh i will wait Yeah, unfortunately, that Switch, any deck that runs a billion Switch cards is going to have an easier time against Snorlax Stall. As the, most, most decks in the meta don't, but Iron Val anything with Iron Valiant is going to be annoying to deal with. Yeah, they just have a bunch of Switch cards. Okay, um, at which point we probably, we probably just lose here. Um, they, unfortunately, yeah, we have run into, run into the, the deck that has, <laughs> that has the answers to Snorlax Switch. I mean, good job for them. Palkia with Iron Valiant is, I think we just scoop here. I don't think we're going to get around this, unfortunately. GG's to our opponent. Um, yeah, Switch Cards is, if your deck runs a ton of Switch Cards, and you can keep your bench low. They kept their bench pretty low and just set up with attackers. And yeah, the other thing is like Palkia is an incredibly efficient attacker. It's only two water energy and it takes based on the number of even if we didn't bench anything else other than the Snorlax, like two, they could two hit KO a Snorlax for the most part. And they they played that well and they were patient, all things considered. And they had Lost City and they had the switch cards. This was going to be a bad matchup for us. So um, you know, we'll take that. We'll take that L. And I think that if you are someone trying to play against the Snorlax, this is a starting point. Um, they kept their bench short. It was only attackers on the board. They had Lost City. They had a bunch of switch cards. Uh, really tough for us to deal with. GG's. There we go. That is a look 
at the Snorlax stall deck. Why are you still, seriously, man, why are you still watching this video? This might be the worst video I've ever made. Why would you want to sit here and watch like 45 minutes, I have no idea how long this video is going to be, uh, of someone just, just not really playing the game? <laughs> but hey, um, if this is the style of play, you like the pokemon company has has put the tools in here to make this strategy more viable than ever and um, should you be teching for snorlax stall if you're playing against it or you're not playing it i think we're gonna have to see how popular it gets i'm recording this before laic if a snorlax stall deck does win laic then maybe we and, and it starts to blow up in whatever meta you play in whether you play irl whether you play on ptcg live maybe you play something like and let me go and grab the Let's switch back here. Uh, this Minior card, which a lot of people are talking about as potentially the, the hard counter to Snorlax, where it's far-flying meteor attack or ability. Once during your turn, if this Pokemon's on your bench, when you attach an energy card from your hand to this Pokemon, you may switch it with your active Pokemon. So you go and fling this into the active, and then it's Gravitational Tackle does 20 damage for each, um, each colorless energy in your opponent's active retreat cost. So uh, this is going to one-shot a, a Snorlax here. Actually, will if... Yeah, this is going to do 160 damage, which will one-shot a Snorlax. It's not going to one-shot a Snorlax if they are playing any sort of health buff, like a Bravery Charm. Um, so it's not perfect, but it is something, right? <laughs> it's something to keep in mind. But yeah, what say you? Do, do you hate this deck more than anything in the world? Do, are you laughing at it because you just tech for this and they, they can't stop you? Do you? Are you just like, I'm a master of playing against these decks and I know the strategy? Let me know in the comments below. But for now, I got to get going. Thank you so much for watching. You can find me on all the things. YouTube, TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram at In Third Person. You can find me on Twitch at In Third Person, where I stream the Pokemon trading card game every Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. And check out the website, InThirdPerson.com, for more articles and videos on video games, board games, and other nerdy pursuits. So until the next one, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.